Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Ray Bozinski. Uh, I'm the uh, um, event supervisor for whether or not. Uh, this is either seventh or eighth year uh, that I've been doing this. Um, I, uh, I have uh, always an interest in weather. Uh, my daytime job is a pediatrician, but I kind of always joke with my kids that when I grow up, I want to become a weatherman. Chance of me growing up are small. Um, my son actually did uh, uh, did this event uh, back in the late uh, 2000s uh, and, and uh, had fun coaching him. Uh, and uh, he did medal a couple of years. Uh, so uh, I, I, I have a big interest. My Three out of our my kids have actually participated in Science Olympia. This is a great opportunity for your kids. Uh, thank you very much for coaching, um, coaching them. Uh, it really means a lot. It gives the kids a chance to one, just learn in addition to the classroom, which is actually really important, and gives them an opportunity to compete. Um, if uh, you've never been to the award ceremony, I mean, it's uh, it's unbelievable. It's like a sporting event for these kids, um, and uh, it, it's really a good opportunity for them. Um, they're going to post up actually um, the sheets. I did make them available. Uh, the information about the event, uh, as well as potentially some uh, items that you can actually uh, review in terms of coaching your kids. So, I don't know, Nikita, can you put that uh, first one up? Or is it up? Yeah, sorry, it's just taking okay, me that's okay. I'm, one or two minutes. I will get that up. Okay, that's okay. All right, I'll just actually um, let you guys know. Actually, and sorry, I, I I changed the body, but I didn't change the title. This is uh, this is for 2023, uh, whether or not um, it is a, uh, a sit down test. Uh, the kids will be stationary. Uh, we don't move around. Uh, for those parents who may have done it way in the past, they used to actually move to stations. We stopped doing that about six years ago or so. Um, it's a uh, question test. Um, it's a, a fill in the blank, uh, not fill in the blank, excuse me, a, a zip grade uh, type sheet for those of uh, us of uh, a certain age, Scantron uh, back in uh, college days. Uh, so again, usually a two, three or four um, uh, answer uh, question. They'll be worth anywhere from one to three points. Those are determined by me. Um, be about a total of 140 points, give or take a few on either side, depending on the type of questions. And um, trying to get actually a, a, a widespread between easier to more difficult questions. Um, there will be no true and false. Uh, they're all actually going to be, you know, uh, response and there will be one single, you know, one single correct answer. Uh, try to be very good about making sure that uh, there's no discrepancies um, in uh, potentially um, uh, word retrieval issues, uh, you know, variations up on there. So again, the, the, there should be one thing available. Um, the first part of the test is actually going to be projected images. Uh, diagrams or GIFs, um, and there'll be two questions per. I usually have each of the question, each of the photographs up for about 30 seconds and uh, go through, so about five minutes, and then actually, you know, repeat them for about 10 seconds. There'll be two questions per um, image. Uh, I will uh, prompt the kids to say this is image number one and questions one and two. Uh, so they fill out the zip grade correctly. Um, and we do this at the beginning. So again, the kids uh, should be able to fill it out there. We will have individuals at least at the county um, uh, at the county uh, test that will make sure that the kids are filling it out appropriately. But it's one of those things as a coach to try to uh, help your kids understand how the zip grades uh, work. Uh, you, you won't have to worry about putting their names on it or schools. Those are already actually pre-written for the uh, for the teams. Um, and then actually, then they'll get to the body of the test. It'll be in two separate booklets. Um, so uh, again, to minimize the confusion. Uh, so there's 20 questions involving the images, and then there'll be approximately 50 questions beyond. I know it sounds like a good uh, big number. 
Uh, it's actually quite about whether or not, again, changing that, but the uh, 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 the powers that be actually like to have that number again uh, to give, again, a spread to be able to uh, determine ranking. Um, uh, as I said, they're going to be worth one, two to three points. Again, mm, questions that actually have only two responses uh, will probably be only one. Uh, and then two for the four and uh, the one that I determined being more difficult questions would be three, uh, three points. Um, the total points actually earn that exam will determine rankings. Now, if there happens to be a tie, then what we do is actually whichever team gets the most of the three point questions correct uh, will be uh, determined the higher ranking team. And if that does not actually do it, there will be a short answer uh, question that actually will be at the uh, bottom of the uh, test and to be answered on the zip grade. Um, and that will be used only if there's no definitive uh, tiebreaker from the first. Um, I always tell my kids, again, you try, you try to fill it out. Uh, again, should be a single sentence. It doesn't have to be uh, too in depth. Spelling does not count. If I can be able to figure it out, again, that's okay. If I can't, well, that, that, that that's it is. But I know in some, uh, it really uh, comes down to actually spelling. Um, sometimes in this case, it will not. I always encourage my kids to fill it up because sometimes, again, they don't do it. And even if somebody puts something down and it's incorrect, they're the closest. Uh, so it can, again, be a tiebreaker, uh, you know, uh, image uh, for, uh, you know, for ranking. Uh, this year's test will concentrate on clouds and precipitation, um, and uh, uh, it counts for about one quarter to one third of the total points for the test. Um, so again, to kind of focus on those kind of things. Um, I think error at the base, I'm not too sure going on down, that uh, putting on up, I did give you a topic list. Oh, there you go, you can see it, you can see it now. So again, I'll let you guys go through that. Um, again, uh, hopefully very straightforward. Um, what kind of things to be aware of? Uh, now, we're, it, it, it's uh, a little difficult sometimes to write a test like this because of the wide gap of age ranges here. We're talking about between third grade and sixth grade, uh, and we only write one test uh, for the county and for the district uh, tests. Um, and unfortunately for some, it's a three to five year old group and then in others it's four to six. So my usual encouragement is again, if you're in the three to five, I wouldn't put a, you know, two third graders together. Their chances of being able to perform well uh, or will be diminished just because they don't have the language uh, available. I do have a um, elementary school teacher reviewing of uh, my uh, my test just to make sure again clear straightforward and appropriate for the age groups that we're talking about um but there will be some uh, terminology that the kids are going to need to be aware of uh to be able to understand the material so um uh, I, I won't go into each one of these items here. As you can see, if you have questions here at the end, please ask. Uh, again, clouds and precipitation are going to be the uh, the uh, the focus this year. So, clouds play out very well actually for images. Um, they'll be straightforward. Um, as I put up in here, that uh, excuse me, I'm going to look over to my side. I have mine printed out here. Um, with regards to clouds, again, the cloud types uh, that are on the page. Um, and, and what I encourage is okay to uh, uh, be able to um, identify a cloud, again, giving you the choices. Uh, I'm not going to try to be tricky. You know, as you can see, if I don't know if any, you know, how many of you are uh, weather weenies like I am. But uh, again, you've got things like uh, alto stratus and cirro stratus and uh, stratocumulus and alto cumulus and um, cirro cumulus. So uh, uh, again, I'm not going to actually make the choices. OK, is this a cirro cumulus or alto cumulus? Again, uh, those actually you probably need to be able to visualize in the sky and understand. But I would want you to understand what the differences are. So in a body question, I may actually give an identification um, say of a 
uh, Ciro Cumulus Cloud and to be able to say what that may be, but I wouldn't do it by an image. Um, I try to actually, uh, you know, give the kids a, a reasonable choice to be able to do this, um, but it does bow out pretty well uh, for photographs. I mean, for images, again, uh, I've used in the past. I may have shown a Doppler with a hook echo, uh, you know, with an arrow again identifying that. Uh, I may show uh, representation of a wall cloud um, or a shelf cloud uh, that comes along with uh, severe thunderstorms and tornadoes to, again, to be able to identify those. And there's lots of images available online, and I've given some resources for you to be able to uh, help your kids be identifying those. Um, and doing that, I've showed uh, images of uh, weather instruments. And again, uh, what is it? Uh, what does it do? Uh, you know, and so forth down the line. Um, so those are kind of things to think about actually when we're going to do images. Uh, I may put up a weather map. Uh, I'm not going to have you do, uh, you know, to be able to identify uh, a, a certain pressure rating. Uh, and, um, you know, so forth. It's going to be identify a front line, a warm front, cold front, stationary front, occluded front, um, and uh, maybe an, you know, what, isobars, um, you know, and so forth. But I'm not going to put up a barb uh, to idea. Of, okay, you know, what's the what's the wind speed or, or what's the humidity based on this one? That's a little too far for 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 these these kids levels. Um, uh, again, I've showed pictures of hurricanes, again, answering questions of it, sometimes maybe where the strong will be. I wanted to be able to identify how hurricanes move, uh, how they rotate, where maybe the stronger winds might be, uh, and so forth down the line. Um, again, certain things I can, yeah, again, writing some of those three-point questions. Again, having to think sometimes a little bit um, and, and to be able to get the answer. Uh, and again, we're just trying to actually, uh, again, delineate uh, for ranking purposes here. So, uh, but the, uh, the, the, the goal here is not to get a gotcha. It is actually to help to educate uh, your kiddos and to try to actually uh, enjoy the topic of weather and meteorology. Um, you know, we have tornadoes, uh, which is always a fan favorite. Again, to understand what the you know, uh, enhanced Vegeta scale is. Uh, and again, uh, you know, the potential types. I'm not going to say, OK, what are the you know, uh, wind types or what kind of damage what will occur uh, within those uh, within those scale measurements. But again, understand what they are and what they do measure. Um, same thing actually with the Sanford symptom, symptom scale. Again, uh, not necessarily, again, what are going to be the wind speeds um, of the varying grades of hurricane. Now, to understand what the wind speed differences are between a, um, a tropical depression, a tropical storm, and a hurricane, yeah, that I would, because again, there could be some questions of what uh, is the difference between this. So again, if you're over 74 miles an hour, again, a hurricane, but between 39 and 73, it's a, it's a, trop it's a tropical storm, even though they may actually look very similar uh, on a photograph. So just to kind of knowing what those differences are. So I, I always encourage my parents, again, uh, to uh, instruct the kids about watches and warnings. Uh, again, this is, for me, hopefully a big educational piece because it's something that our culture has a difficulty understanding. Um, and uh, I'm hoping this actually helps really save your kids' lives over time to understand what the differences are so they make sure they take appropriate precautions uh, during these times. Um, all right, I think that's about it on those. Does anybody have any questions with regards to the uh, items that we have that's been shown up here and maybe made available? Does anybody have any questions in particular? Hi, I have a question. Hold on here. I'm going to turn your my sound up a little bit. Okay, go ahead again, please. I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Jason Brugman. I'm one of the coaches for Fox Elementary. And the question that I have is, um, it's a t it's a test based event. Are there any uh, guides or any t maybe practice tests we can we can practice with the kids? You know what? I, I I don't put it up there, and here's the reason why. I know it's been it's been done before. Um, the problem is again uh, it, it, we there's a limited number of question styles of being able to do. 
Uh, we don't want to make them available again and, and just being able to memorize what a question, you know, what a question was and the answers for it. Uh, there's a certain number of points that I can since we're writing two tests every year of 70 questions, it's 140 and then over a three year period. So there's limitations that I have. So again, I'm going to rotate questions. I'm going to do it and uh, hopefully again, some questions may get repeated from year to year, but being able to have them uh, uh, available uh, and doesn't put anybody at an unfair advantage just because they have access to the questions and tests. So that's one of the reasons why the kids are not able to leave. The test booklet needs to be kept uh, you know, in the room. Uh, we can't leave it from there. So, uh, I mean, the, the questions are hard. Pardon? Go ahead. Somebody had a question, I'm sorry. There's a comment in the chat. Um, someone said that there are some weather quizzes available online for possible practice. There may be, it's not from me, so there could be, of course, there are other things, of course, that you can go to. Um, if uh, if you if you actually have those available, if you want to send it to me and I can look to see if actually uh, if it's something that probably would be worth your time to be able to study off of uh, and to kind of get the idea of a questions, I, I, I won't have a problem with that. Uh, again, if it's something that's too involved, that may be things not to, you know, to spend too much time, um, you know, uh, uh, on that. So, I mean, that's the that's the rationale here. Um, uh, so I, I know some people don't uh, don't like that idea, but again, it's it's just uh, uh, it's one of those things that again have to keep that uh, my collection of, of questions, um, you know, available to me. So I've got about 300, uh, 300 now to 350 put aside uh, again, just to make sure I've got rotation here. OK, um, just a couple other questions in the chat. Uh, someone said, where can we print this? And I can help answer that. This will be posted on the website by the end of the week, so you'll be able to download um, this whole presentation and also the materials themselves will be posted, so you'll be able to print those off. Um, someone said, will the website be updated with new study guides to represent the topics for this year? Uh, you know, the study guides is just a general. And uh, again, uh, the couples that I have put up here already actually kind of really um, uh, emphasize uh, the the main focus. The, the Cloud Spotter guides a very uh, interesting guide, uh, beautiful photographs. So to be able to look at also again, being able to uh, uh, you know, represent the the the, uh, the type of questions that will go as I uh, put down in the listing with regards to clouds again, understanding what the clouds are to be able to identify them, what layer they are, are they low level clouds, mid level clouds, high level clouds, what are they composed of, whether more water droplets versus ice droplets uh, or uh, ice crystals, and then what kind of weather or precipitation are usually involved with it. And they have really good um, charts in there to be able to work with. So both the cloud spider guide as well as as clouds and weather, the, the Peterson guide. Uh, so um, those are good actually for those kind of photograph type uh, purposes. The other books again, uh, like weather, the kids, the everything kid book weather, uh, the actually the last one listed there is actually just came out here in October. Uh, I picked it up. It actually looks really good and being able to have kids understand what the concepts are that were uh, that we're trying to have them understand uh, and to be able to perform well. Uh, again, you can go down to the NOAA website as I had here that again, you, they give you good information with regards to um, terminology, uh, with regards to warnings and, and so forth down the line. Uh, again, issues that again, sometimes it's, some of these things will actually be more important and geared towards the coaches for them to make sure they're learning the material so then they can actually be able to uh, help the kids understand at their level. Uh, so there's kind of a mixture in here that may be more geared towards more the coach and then some towards the kids for self-learning. Um, so it kind of a mix I think is going to be best. Okay, it's the way I kind of approached it when I coached it for my son as well um, 15 years ago. Uh, and doing that, I'm trying to see how can I get to my questions here? Um, it looks like a couple of people have their hand raised, so I can just say the yeah. name and then if whoever wants to unmute or type in the chat. So first I have Natalie Cypher has her hand raised. Right, I said I work for Outdoor Adventure Center. I'm running too. Okay, thank you. Uh, so if you guys can get on that one, seeing more. Um, yeah, so, so I, I can talk just a, just a, a second about that. If you could. Um, so 
so yeah, it's two different um, workshop opportunities. One of them is uh, February 14th and one is the 16th and they are 6 to 7.30 p.m. And each one of those would be the same. So you wouldn't need to come to both of them. They're just two opportunities for the same workshop. Um, registration is required since we're limited with space. Um, and so in the past we've had uh, coaches attend and students attend. It's basically designed for um, for both. And I do do a little practice test with it, um, like a practice multiple choice test and um, some stations with um, images. Good. Um, so I've not really had a whole lot of feedback over the years in terms of like how helpful it is. So I, I right. honestly, I, I. I hope that it's been really helpful. I don't know if anybody who's who's in this has any feedback or has heard or has done this event in the past and um, and could give any feedback on how how helpful it's been. But but I do try to cover um, most of the uh, main points that are listed here in this presentation, and I'll focus a chunk of my workshop on um, you know clouds and precipitation since that's a heavy focus for the for the test this year. All right. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen that? Were your kids involved in this, or you just actually work for the DNR? I just I work for the DNR. Um, okay. and so the the Outdoor Adventure Center is located in uh, Detroit, and um, um, yeah. So I've not like been involved any any bit behind beyond that, just doing this workshop. But you know, we looked at the list of of events and figured that you know I could do weather. So. That's okay. it. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. I could actually think if I if I can get a hold of your email address, I could send you some style of my questions uh, again if that can help you be sure. able to do things more uh, and maybe a representative pictures I've used in the past. Um, so and that could be uh, a, a big help. Uh, and I may register depending on what the uh, you know what the days look like in that that maybe to come down there down there myself and see whether or not. Uh, uh I, I can help answer questions as well so I, I did not utilize that the only thing i utilized back when i was uh doing my son is i did do uh, the uh skywarm for uh the county uh, i took my son to that that uh, that uh, the uh, uh weather service does every year so there usually is one probably in the early part, late part of March, early part of April. So if you actually go to the National Weather Service website, uh, that's available and then they, they just go through actually about uh, the information for Skywarn. And so again, gets a better idea about uh, uh, cumulonimbus clouds, tornadoes, uh, some definitions, warnings, things. So it's actually, a, it's, a, it's a nice uh, event, again, an added piece. Uh, it's a small section of the test, but again, uh, is pretty worthwhile. OK, anything else? Let me see. Did I miss anything, Nikita? Yeah, it looks like um, Mukti Shah also has her hand raised if you want to unmute and ask a question. Hi, um, so this event is working a team like I have my both daughters uh, right. pair up together. So yeah. are they allowed to discuss yes. like together like or I don't know if it's going to get bothered by other team players i don't know like is it in the room and then the girls are working together this is our first time doing it ever okay. that's okay it's a good question uh it, it, the uh yes actually they can talk to each other uh it, encourage it um uh, i i will give actually uh, uh some uh you know some uh, uh uh nudge if we're getting a little too loud uh my encouragement is to stay it, it, they can sit some kids will stand and i understand some kids do need to be up and move a little bit uh, again if it's a little bit too much where it can be distracting uh again i may have to you know ask the kids to uh tone it in a little bit um uh, i do understand again uh some of you know some of our kids do have some issues uh with uh uh, with being able to sit still uh, and they need to be moving around actually to alleviate some stress. So I, I'm OK talking with each other is OK. Just remember again, if you're talking loud, your people next to you may hear. Uh, so uh, you don't necessarily want to actually uh, <laughs> give some more information. Um, you're going to have be able to bring in one five by eight card. Uh, we didn't bring that up uh, uh, earlier. Uh, it can be on both sides. Uh, uh, on it again can be done any way that you want to. It's one card per team. 
uh, not per you know per student. Um, so you can have that available. Strongly, strongly again, uh, to point out no electronic devices are allowed, uh, you know, in the classroom. Uh, if it gets seen, as far as I'm concerned, it's an immediate disqualification. Uh, can't have any uh, potential that, again, uh, people are worried about cheating in that. Now, again, there's not a lot of time. It's kind of probably hard to do it. But again, I don't want to have anything about there should be no reason for your kids to have it. They're going to be in a safe environment. We can be right outside the room. Um, you know, the coaches can stay right outside the room, but there really isn't a reason for the kids to have their uh, have their phones uh, available uh, in the classroom setting. Generally, they've kind of been anywhere up to maybe 15 to 16 teams in the classroom. Uh, it does depend on which classroom we get. Um, it's always a little bit of a challenge about making sure it's dark enough to be able to see the image as well, but still have enough ambient light to be able to see the questions, you know, so I'm at the mercy of what they give me, uh, but I'll be there early enough and try to manipulate uh, as much as we can. Um, and uh, but yes, you guys can definitely they can talk uh, to each other. But again, as the saying is to keep it down to a dull roar. Um, and pretty much the kids have always been really good. I've only run into a few instances where, uh, you know, multiple, you know, multiple times the kids would have to be done. I've never, uh, you know, disqualified anybody in that, but it, it can get kind of frustrating to the other kids around them. So, and um, uh, I have two more questions. Um, how long is the event? Ah, good question. It, it's, it, it's a 30 minute event. So the, and again, well, the district test is kind of that uh, for those who participate in a district uh, in a district uh, test, um, almost a little bit of a training. Again, I try it, it, the best if we can. Actually, the kids already aware what the rules are before they come in, so we don't have to keep answering questions at the very beginning. As I said, it takes about six minutes, six and a half minutes, to be able to present the images total. So that leaves then the remainder of the time available. It's a 30 minute test. Reality is you probably only have about 25 to 28 total minutes to be able to complete the test. So the sooner we can get things going and having people available, then the, you know, the, the more time that the kids have available. Um, it's not as much of a problem at the district because again, there's only a few depending on the places. It gets to be a problem for the county test. Uh, because again, it may be involved in multiple. I'm going to probably anywhere between four to five of these that I'm going to be running on that day in May um, and doing that. And then people need to get out because they may actually have another test 15, you know, 15 minutes after. So they need to get maybe even across campus. Um, so it, it, it's one of those things that we do need to be running on time. Um, if you show up late again, they can start the test again, depending on, on doing that one. We can come, you know, we can have people enter in late. However, uh, again, make sure the kids go to the restroom before the event starts. My feeling is if you leave the event, you stay out of the event. Because um, again, there's that, you know, the, the, the potential accusation that people are cheating. Um, you know, again, I don't think that your kids are doing that, but unfortunately we have some people who would complain and I think we have to do all we can to minimize, uh, that, uh, possibility. So, uh, encourage my kids to, to, to do that. Can kids leave once they, if they finish the test, can they leave early? The answer is yes. Of course, I'm going to encourage them. Make sure that all your answers are, you know, are filled in, make sure all your, uh, your circles are uh, filled in on the zip grade, uh, go through it. Uh, the kids can write on the exam, but it needs to be on the zip grade for it to count. So you could have every answer right on the on the, the sheets, but we don't identify what the school is on the sheets or anything else. So unless they're actually on the zip grade, eh, sorry, it's not gonna count. Um, Again, the the zip grades are usually pretty self-explanatory. I, I think we should uh, be able to get uh, representations of that uh, from uh, you know from the event uh, 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 coordinator uh, and, and doing that so you you can have represented to help the kids to make sure it usually goes uh, question numbers in columns down one I think to twenty 
maybe 24, and then next column goes down. So again, just to make sure that the, the kids understand how it is so they don't uh, you know, fill in the wrong one. I think, again, most of us who've gone to college uh, still probably wake up with that nightmare that we did that um, in filling these out. So um, that's what I encourage my parents to be, you know, to, to kind of help them as part of the training right now to understand, to keep it as, as simple as we can. Uh, they've had a couple times when there have been some tears because again, they just got all messed up. Um, you know, there, there are people sometimes have asked because there are going to be two different booklets. There is a potential that one could be paying attention to the images while the other one starts the other test. Again, be careful. You can, but again, to fill out the zip grade correctly, because that's the only thing we're going to do the, you know, to, to, to score from. Okay. And last question that I have for the they're talking about the DNR workshop. Yep. So how do I register and which what is the website and how do I, I do that? I think what it looks like from there are Natalie, are you still available? If you want to answer that question, do you know? Or it yes. looks like it's available on the on the uh, uh, the Macomb Science Olympiad website, but I don't know exactly. It is. Where. Yes. Oh, uh, OK. Um, I think it's on the same. It might be the same page that on the website that the link for this workshop was on. Okay, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure, but there is a link for it on um, on the Macomb Science Olympiad website. And then also um, you could register through just through us, through our Rec 1 system, which is, you know, you could contact us to get more information about that. But yeah, registration is required because typically this event does fill up like our room space okay. so we do really need folks to register there's not a cost for it we just need to know that folks are coming uh, yeah, and just to add to that it is on the website um if you go under the events under workshops for any event whether it be um whether or not or any other event you can go on the website go under workshops and they will all be there for you to register for um, and one other thing I wanted to add was the zip grade forms are also on the website. So if you want to practice with them with your students, um, you can print off as many as you want and practice. So that way they're familiar with the zip grade Scantron. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good idea that will help. I think that will help the kids out quite a bit. Um, uh, uh, Natalie, uh, uh, give uh, approximate cross streets where the uh, in, in Detroit uh, yep. that the Yep, we're located on Atwater Street. Um, it, the corner is Atwater and Orleans. It's right on the Detroit River, and it's just a couple blocks. Um, I river walk then. Um, east of the Renaissance Center building. Yeah, it's right along the river walk. It's across the street from Millican State Park. Um, okay. Yeah, that's where we're at. OK, 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 I got a general idea where it's at then. OK, sounds good. Yeah, it's easy to get to. I've been down the river walk uh, a, a couple dozen times. It's actually a really uh, nice area, very safe area. So for those who are coming from up in, in here, you, you, you should be uh, should be uh, uh, fairly easy. You're going to if you get on 75 down and get off on Jefferson, then it's probably about maybe a half mile down and then to the right. Um, yep. I think about right. OK, yep. um, OK. So uh, good questions. Anything else? Anybody else have? Have uh, I, 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 how, I, I, anybody who's on uh, on uh, on wise? Has anybody coached this event before? The kids done it, or is everybody fairly new this year? All right. No. 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 I'm uh, new. Okay. I'm I coached last year. Yeah, so I mean that's the reason when somebody asked about the questions, you know, we ha I have had kids who've done it three years in a row, so uh, I kind of have to make sure I've got some other ones because some of the kids can go ahead and it just gives you them a potentially falsely elevated score, you know, by the third uh, time. They're also older, so they have more understanding. But again, we want to give uh, a, a fair uh, opportunity to all the kids because really what they're trying, we're trying to do here is to have a great learning experience for them uh, in a competitive way. Um, and uh, I think the kids come away uh, with uh, having a better understanding about uh, the weather around them. Um, I, I'm not going to uh, ask actually one of the questions that sometimes comes up and uh, I didn't point out exactly there. I, I don't ask about historical weather. I don't expect to know about uh, any kind of uh, big events. 
um, in, in that this is, again, to try to be a little bit more generalized uh, with regards to uh, the uh, uh, to weather itself rather than to uh, specific events. Uh, nothing about any kind of people at all. Uh, to have some knowledge, I know my predecessor had done some of that with history. I just don't think it uh, serves a purpose for what this learning environment should be. Anything else? Okay. I um I just raised my hand real quick. I, I can actually put the registration links in the chat here if that's helpful. Um, for the workshop, uh, for the Outdoor Adventure Center workshops. Is that okay, uh, uh, Nikita? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yep, I appreciate that. Thank no, you. That would be perfect. Yeah, I would, uh, again, any opportunity there to be able, again, it's it's nice for the parents to get comfortable. I'll, I'll have to tell you, when I did it actually with my son, I think I actually ended up studying more than he did, uh, again, to prepare. Um, and uh, you know to make sure I had he and his partner ready for this, uh, and uh, so uh, it was uh, it was uh, tens of hours that I put in, but it really helped out. The kids performed really really well. So uh, you know you understanding uh, these kind of concepts will help to be able to um, gear the kids because uh, every child learns differently. So you guys will know uh, what the skill sets of your 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 children are. I think that's about I think that's about it. Um, again, the, the the goal here is to make sure it's a a fun learning experience for the kids. Um, if there's any questions at all, of course, uh, we can send them through the web uh, uh, through the website, and they will get over to me. I will try to answer them as quick. I don't go to the site daily, uh, but I will uh, do my best to be able to answer. Um, uh, again, anything specific questions that's going to be on there, I, I, I don't necessarily uh, may not be able to answer uh, in uh, entirety. Uh, the test uh, for the district is, uh, you know, in, in the near completion state. So again, um, uh, have that uh, be able to be ready because I think uh, it starts on the 4th of uh, March. I can't remember who does it first, um, but uh, so. Um, Again, it's going to be very similar for those who coached last year. Again, test is going to be pretty uh, similar in, in style um, and really haven't uh, made any uh, significant changes in the last few years. The big one was actually uh, utilizing uh, the uh, images and, and doing that and then making a stationary test over that. So uh, if there are any other questions, again, you can uh, serve those through the uh, through the website again usually when there's an answer it will remain posted so again it is available to everyone so it may be a good idea to periodically check uh, as a coach to see if there's any question that may have been asked that maybe you didn't think about and so you have that uh that knowledge uh for you anything else I'm trying to see any more hands doesn't look like it all right i guess that's it good luck with uh good luck with your students have fun with this. For those of you who are first timers, it's a great experience. Uh, like I said, I've had three out of four of my kids uh, participate in it and, and they truly in, in enjoyed it. There are some of our kids who've gone on uh, and worked uh, in both the junior and middle high uh, school as well as high school uh, and lots of opportunities in this area. And some of the uh, schools in this area that uh, from the high school level have performed really, really well. Uh, but it does count on, on on us parents being able to help uh, to continue to coach these events uh, for the kids. Uh, so for those of you who are taking the time, uh, truly do appreciate it. Uh, 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 I think the kids may not necessarily thank you, but in the long run, uh, they, they will appreciate the time that you put in.